Wrestling. Oh yeah! Welcome to Grind City Wrestling. This is episode 278. If you're keeping up, I am Dustin Starr, and thank you for joining us. Be sure to follow us on social media at Grind City Media. Pick that subscribe button to Slap City wherever you're watching and wherever you're listening. Also, go check out the archives. They are absolutely loaded with interviews with wrestling's biggest stars. That's Grind City Media dot com slash podcast now last week we talked about how hulk hogan killed wcw and i didn't hear any arguments this week we're going to talk about the best wrestling we watched all week and then a whole lot more but ladies and gentlemen right now it is bell time so introducing my co-host my tag team partner he's a local business owner might see him in a ufc cage every now and then ladies and gentlemen it's e-rock eric mcmahon what's up e what up? I never said Hogan killed WCW. I did not say that. I love how the first sentence out of your mouth is argumentative, and I already see Devin pointing up his finger. So real quick, let's go ahead and announce the third man in the trio. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the best follows on all of social media. Give him a follow at Devin underscore Walker 2. Ladies and gentlemen, Devin Walker, baby. What up, D? I said Hogan, <laughs> but uh, other, other, me too. No, uh, so today, you know, we're going to talk about it. But today, I had to pull out the closet. I had to go find this in my closet. If you know, you know, bro. The Who's Next WCW on the sleeve with the old school Goldberg tattoo. Dude, that's starter wait, too. Wait starter a second, is is, is that a Braun Breaker tattoo on the sleeve? How dare you? How dare you? This is the the real Braun Breaker. Goldberg's hey. the real Braun Breaker. I have never seen that jersey before in my entire life, and it is super cool. It's something that I would wear. I might even put a sport coat on top of that bad boy. Get some matching shoes. I feel like if, if I gave you this to wear, though, you might like pop out of it because I know you like to wear medium stuff. Yeah, I got to get the medium. Anyways, what's going on, guys? E, first, what? anything new? Have you watched any wrestling? How's the baby? Got a lot hey, going on. Baby's keeping me up all freaking night right now, bro. All freaking night. So, but um, but no, baby girl's great. Um, do I watch Who Killed WCW? Episode oh, let's two. Go. Let's go. We will definitely be talking about that here in just a second. Devin, what's going on with you, brother? Anything new? Shit, just watching wrestling, bro. Watching wrestling in different ways. I have a gripe. Uh, a gripe about this new age of wrestling. Uh, I guess. Speak I'll, on I'll... it, then. What you want me to say it right now? So, all right, let's talk about it then. Before we get to best wrestling. So we all know that. Uh, the internet, the dirt sheets. Everybody's talking about Ricochet's contracts up. Ricochet's contracts up. How they're gonna write Ricochet off television? Oh my God! Let's all tune into Monday Night Raw to see how he gets written off of television, bro. That takes the fun out of everything. When you know someone's getting written off, written off of television, what? Like, what's the point? Like back in the day, okay, Eric's making a face. When I was a kid, right? When I was a kid, when I was younger watching wrestling, when I saw a guy get thrown off a ledge or thrown into a a car or throw into a side of a building or get wheelchaired off the stairs. I didn't even know if he was getting rid of the television. I was like, oh shit, he just fell. Oh no. Like remember when Kurt Angle uh, got pushed off the ledge by Big Show, right? Mm-hmm. That's still one of the most traumatic moments in my life, bro. I still remember that vividly where I was, how old I was when I watched it. Dude, when Earthquake smashed Hogan or yeah. when The Undertaker uh, locked warrior in the casket. Same exactly. thing, man. Like stuff like that, bro. That that blurs the reality, right? Like, oh no, is he actually hurt? When you start doing the the dirt sheets, put the story out that they're gonna write him off television. Like, come on, bro. What happened to the old days? I know I sound old saying this take, but what happened to the old days of just watching the show, enjoying the show, enjoying God getting his getting getting his ass kicked, and then dealing with the contract stuff afterwards? can't do it anymore you can't do it the internet i all want the clicks they're all one on let me tell you just something real quick because this we're was on my notes wrestling bro i wanted to talk i wanted to talk about this and i'm glad you brought it up right off the jump we'll get to our best wrestling here in just a moment but ricochet leaving wwe i'm going to tell you right now i think it's a work i think so too i, I think, I think, I think it's a work at, at castle the castle show just like charlotte just like drew who else was it recently where their contract was coming up and they tried to make you kind of believe that maybe they were going to leave, but then at the end of it, they're like, oh no, we were never leaving to begin with. Now, Ricochet might leave, but I just don't see it happening because Ricochet- But didn't Ricochet, biggest... wasn't it Ricochet though, just wasn't he the one who put it out? 
I can't, I'm not really sure, but I've been seeing all the dirt sheets talk about it. I just don't think it's true because Ricochet is one of the biggest stars on Monday Night Raw. He really is. He was an intercontinental champion. I know everybody was saying, oh, he's capable of so much more. He has literally been a focal point on a lot of the stories going on on Monday Night Raw. Why would you jump ship right now? WWE is bigger and better than ever. They're paying out more money than ever. Ricochet's been in major high profile stuff, especially this thing with Braun Breaker. Then you mix in Samantha Irvin. That's what I really don't like is having the ring announcer have so much popularity that now you have to worry about potentially her leaving with her boyfriend or with her um, her fiance. So I'm calling the thing a whole work. I don't think it's going to happen. Where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? I don't know because I mean he could have some bangers in AEW, but uh, he's going to have some bangers. But come on, dude. Yeah, they're really all having bangers just, in AEW, but it's not meaning anything right now. I just think the internet is ruining the the the, the wrestling. Like uh, it's not ruining wrestling as a whole, but I think it's ruining that part of it. Right, the part where we like used to like you said the earthquake thing, the Kurt Angle like. All those moments that we were like, <gasps> it's like, oh, okay, he's getting rid of off television. But it's not, it's not, what are we doing? Let me I ask a question. Gonna... I, mm -hmm. I, Devin, I love that you brought this up. Why did the earthquake splash screw up Hogan <laughs> worse than it screwed up everybody else? <laughs> Ask Story. wrestling, wrestling, buddy. Story, baby. It's because he did yeah. it twice on the, wasn't it the Brother Love Show? I think so. It's all about the story, though, and yeah. and it's all about the selling. And if you sell, then it, it, like Hogan, it, you mentioned Earthquake did the same thing to Hogan, just did it twice. It's because Hogan sold it like he was dead. If you sell, you don't have His to get up and do anything else, man. I still remember. <laughs> His leg was twisted. Yeah. Yeah, like I just, I just want to know, like y'all, like, like in the people in the comments, let me know, bro. Do you think the internet's messing up wrestling when they put out all these? The internet and social media has ruined everything. They're ruining a lot of shit, bro. Like, I some shit is cool because you get like more in depth of some stuff, but like this shit, bro. Like, let Ricochet play his contract out, bro. Like when he got I hated before, that. I'm like, oh, that's why. That's why I think it's a work is because it was released, and then they did the story, and then I think it's going to be a huge surprise when Ricochet comes back. I heard <laughs> Bully Ray talking about it on Busting Open. What if Ron Breaker comes and gets in Samantha Irvin's face the next time they're on Monday Night Raw, or in these weeks to come when she returns and Ron gets in her face and says something about "I did that," and then when Ricochet comes back, we care about him more than ever. There's so much we can talk about with Ricochet, but, but, but I think it's a ir ironically the the throw into the building, right? The dart throw. Yeah. Um. Do you think that's a just because the previous week there was so much talk about that yep, just yes, from the previous week sure. on Absolutely. who killed WCW is correlated one to one. For sure. Just like AJ Styles wearing the powder blue suit, very similar to the powder pink suit that Mark Henry wore during the retirement speech. I think they're just playing right off of what they already have out there. Yeah. All right, so we do have a lot to get to. You can follow Eric on Twitter at e underscore MacLive. Mac Devin's. Devin underscore Walker two and I am at Dustin Star. We're gonna hit some news and notes here in just a bit. Memphis wrestling is absolutely loaded next week. We're gonna tell you all about it. We have the best wrestling that we watched all week coming up. But first, we announced our first ever Memphis wrestling kids camp. Check this out. Attention parents and kids, get ready for Memphis Wrestling Kids Camp. Our two-day camp on July 25th and 26th at the Wrestle Center features live wrestling matches. Create your own character, cut a promo in the ring, work out like a wrestler, and more. Register now at MemphisWrestling.tv. Welcome back to Grind City Wrestling. Are you guys going to sign up for the Memphis Wrestling Kids Camp? Yeah. I don't wear a size medium, so I can't. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. It's going to be a ton of fun, you guys. If you know anybody, register MemphisWrestling.tv. It's going to be a ton of fun. Character creation, in-ring promos, working out like a wrestler. We're going to whip these kids into shape, brother. All right. Best wrestling we watched all week. E-Rock. Who killed Europe. WCW? Who killed WCW? Man, dude, I am so into this. And here's the deal. It's like I take exception with like Flair and Hogan being pissed off that they're not included. We've heard that story so many damn times. Yeah. It ain't yeah. about you. 
Right. All right. Exactly. I like to hear, you know, what the beauty of it, and especially this week, is you're having the executives of Turner Broadcasting, TNT, AOL, Time Warner, really telling the behind the scenes stuff. And that's my, that was kind of my point of last week. It's like one person doesn't take down a Hulk Hogan, doesn't take down this global mm. empire, right? Ah, this global ah. empire. I know that don't work for you, brother. But but I loved this week how they were saying how they were reallocating debts from other shows and departments and other businesses into WCW to bring down their operating budget. And I mean, listen, this is some a lot of wrestling marks aren't going to understand this. It is. There's so much business, like high business. level billion dollar business stuff has nothing to it. do with wrestling has nothing Correct. to do with wrestling has nothing to do with who the champion is who won who lost goldberg any of that stuff has nothing to do with that it has everything to do with absolute business with a major company well and, and, and to everybody was like why would you ever put hogan and um goldberg i know we're going to get into this why would you ever put hogan and goldberg on free tv and not run a pay-per-view because because tnt is a television company Yes. They own the they own the broad they they own the channel they own the time slot they own that it's not WWE does not own USA Network they don't own Fox you know TNT owned or AOL Time Owner Time Warner owned uh, TNT TNT and WCW that's the that's why they're that's a television the, company that's the difference yeah and I, that's the thing like that's the difference in like. Like I said, they said WWE is a wrestling company. WCW is just a part of a TV network, right? So that's why they were allowed to kind of like put their put their hands in the jar so much of like, okay, you can't do this. Oh wait, you can't do that. Wait, eh, that's a little edgy. You can't do that. So I, I, we talked about it last week, and you said maybe Turner is the one that killed WCW. I shifted a little bit as I watched the second episode. Like you know what? Because Bischoff was pushing, still pushing the envelope, bro. Well, and you could tell it was like breaking him week by week that they were like. Nah, you can't do that. Ah, uh, you can't do that. And it's like, okay, bro, what am I supposed to do? In full transparency, I have not watched episode two. I did go back and watch episode one. Uh, again, I don't have Hulu Live or Vice. I have YouTube TV, and it's just harder to find until it you know, reaches YouTube or it's updated on Hulu. So I will watch it, and I will get caught up. But I did go watch episode one. And based off episode one, I feel like I'm right. Hulk Hogan killed WCW. And if you think about all these problems that you guys are talking about from episode two, they all stemmed from one major talent that was shifting his weight around. And then it changed the outlook of, of business. And especially when it comes to money, hiring all of Hogan's friends, that's not going to work for me, brother, ruining the biggest main event in WCW history against Sting. Because like I said, he wasn't in shape good enough for Hulk Hogan. And watching episode one, it looked like that's exactly what happened. So I still think even even through all the executive and all that stuff, it stems from one major talent making a shit ton of money and then pulling his weight around. I, no, you know, like, they talk I, about the, the salary thing, Eric. They talk about how like basically they were talking about like Yo, what's going on? Why is this person making a million? Why is this person like? Yeah, time out real quick. Like, are you not seeing AEW in this WCW story? Like, how in the world are they possibly paying all of these people all of these millions of dollars when some of them you know aren't even on TV right now? But listen, you're you're correct in part. I think from like a thirty thousand foot view, you look at it and you like, yeah, it makes one hundred percent. You can't allocate resources to X amount of talent that aren't doing stuff and, 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 and all that. I get that. And you're hundred percent right. Right. But now you need to look at it from a, a even not a 30,000 foot view, a hundred thousand foot view, right? You have this conglomerate, which is AOL time Warner, right? They didn't like wrestling either, by the way, but here, but here's the thing in like all it. of, yeah, no, a hundred percent. And here's the thing in all of this that I think is going greatly uh, just not talked about and especially not talked about wrestling fans because this is harder to compute and I'm not calling anybody dumb but I work in business I get this I get this probably more than most is when all these companies right first off just you know TNT then it merges with AOL Time Warner then it merges with whatever guess what Ted Turner 
right? The owner, the one who originally did it, he gets diluted every single time because yep. his shares are bought out. So his voice means less. And now we're going to say, okay, I'm just going to throw out, you know, CNN is in one of, is part of that conglomerate. Okay. We're going to allocate CNN's debt over to here to make the balance sheets and the books look different, which means we're going to bring down the operating expense. Yes. Hogan had something on air. That billion, multi-billion dollar conglomerate could have left this going as long as they wanted. If they chose, it wasn't dollars per cents. If you look at what Bischoff was saying in 98, the year before they shut down was their highest grossing revenue year ever. So that just gives me more credence to what I'm saying. It's a purely business economical decision of what do you want in, in on your platform and your platform being that prime slot and AOL time Warner is the one determining that not Ted Turner anymore. Yeah, it was, I feel it like was, Hogan was the first initial boom, and then he went away and came back, and then he was another big boom. And then if it wasn't for Goldberg, that company would have died a long time ago. Before that, they would have died. It, there's no doubt about it, because Hogan, Hogan was soft. Red and yellow started to slow down in 94, 95. It was, it was almost dead. Yeah. And then 96 hit for Bash at the Beach, and it all came back. I still but say it starts But you understand that we're arguing two different points? No, I do, I do, but I feel like okay. that the that the big payoff and all the creative control and stuff definitely had something to to do with it. Okay, so Devin, best wrestling you watched all week? Hey, I I love talking about this because it's it's crazy. Like we didn't even get to talk about the kick, which I I love to talk about. Oh, dude, I love Bret Hart finally Bret talking Hart's about it. Right? Nobody Oops. hates Goldberg. I, nobody hates Goldberg more than Bret Hart, bro. How angry. Like, is Bret Hart like they showed on Twitter a montage of just like highlights of what he was saying, and it was just like there was no in between, just Brett, 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 Brett. And he was like, stupid, stupid idiots, stupid assholes, stupid, <laughs> ridiculous, bunch of idiots. You got a feel for Brett, though. You really do. I mean, he, you know, look at. I don't know if this is 100% correlated to the kick, but with his stroke and all this stuff, who knows? It probably has something to do with it. I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a doctor. But that dude got kicked in his freaking temple. Oh, man, dude, that was brutal. It did ruin his career. It did end his career. Um, Was Goldberg... uh, Green, too the green to be throwing Goldberg, that. When Scott Hall asked him, "Yo, man, what the oh, f- are you doing?" He said, "I don't know what I'm doing." Like, and then he, he asked him, "He said, what are you doing?" He said, "I don't know what I'm doing." Like, Bret Hart is one of those veterans that that wrestled everywhere. He's a ring general. This is a television show, like Eric said earlier. It's a television show. I mean, the wrestling matters, but it's all about the characters and making that money. And if Goldberg wasn't the best wrestler, I mean, that's just how it is. He was like Hulk Hogan was never the best wrestler, but he always drew more money. It does suck that he injured Brett and and took him out, you know, and ended his career. But I hate to be the person that says it, but like, that's what happens in professional wrestling. It is a rough business. And Unfortunately, Brett got kicked in the head. Actually, the weird thing is the kick didn't even look that devastating, really. But it just goes to show you, hit him in the right spot. All right, Devin, but if best you, if you watch a lot of those concussions in football, it's like those glancing blows like that across the side of helmets or like who what F people up. And that's what that kick did. It kind of well, like and how many how many them. concussions did Brett have in his WWF days all those years or stampede? You know, I could tell you there are multiple times throughout my career that I've been knocked silly. I never once went to the doctor about it or the hospital about concussions, but I know for a fact I've been concussed at least three times that I can even remember. Brett It'll wrestled four if you don't watch your tone with me. Brett uh, wrestled way longer than me and had so much more mini matches. I'm sure, like uh, there's no telling. All right, can Devin, we talk sorry. about Goldberg and 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 Kev and Goldberg and Kevin Nash, like how? Bitter Nash is to Goldberg. I love what that. a jerk. Kevin Nash is being a real, real a hole, bro. Real He's like a-hole. everybody knows that the baby face needs to chase the heel <laughs> for the title. Oh, and it just needs to be you, right, Kevin Nash? Right. You need yeah. to be Kevin Nash booked himself to beat Goldberg. That's all you need to know about Kevin Nash, right there. Yeah. He booked himself, and he booked all his homeboys after that to just be all involved with it. So that's the yep. story for another day. How, this, the, this, how the bleep does this... Look, now I'm getting hot. I'm getting hot about it. How in the F does Kevin Nash get the booking job in that situation? 
he was taking it off of Bischoff's plate. Bischoff was too unbelievably dumb. Bischoff was too overwhelmed, so he trusted Kevin Nash. And so Bischoff's sitting there going, "Oh, now Big Kev's got the book, and now he's all of a sudden going to be go." How does he not go? Wait a second, hold on, Kev. Wait a minute. This is yeah. definitely a conflict of interest. Why are you doing this? Like what? What? Oh, you the world. Hey, that's another thing. Like we could talk about this all day because another thing they talked about that was an issue with WCW is clean finishes. And Bret Hart talked yes. about that. He said Terrible. we had an issue with clean. Like they felt like every finish had to be a run in or every. a taser or like something like what clean finishes, bro. AEW kind of has that issue a little bit now. Like what happened yep. to the clean? Because nobody wants to lose. So when I'm and again, this is small fries compared to WCW and WWE. But when we're booking Memphis Wrestling, I literally think back to WCW Nitro and how many screw finishes there were, run ins, and you you had this big main event match, but then nobody won because of a run in every single time. So I tell the guys, look, we're gonna do that. Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. Because if somebody doesn't win and somebody doesn't lose, you guys are cheated. Because you're sitting there, and especially us, we're going to be like, man, that's like WCW. I swear yeah. to God. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Red Hart's like, bro, there's 20 people running in. What the fuck is going on? Like the Georgia Dome where Goldberg defeated Hulk Hogan, I could have bet, and I was too I was too young, I didn't have a house, but I would have bet my house that there would be a screw job finish where Hogan somehow kept the title with all the run-ins and then they came back and did it on a pay-per-view. That's what I thought we were getting. That's why it was so awesome when Goldberg beat Hogan for the title in his hometown, sold out Georgia Dome. And Georgia Dome at that point was like the biggest, best arena in all of the United States. So, E? Time out, time out, time out. He's doing time. Here we go. So you mean to tell me now you're doing an about face. No. Hogan did the job. He did what's right for he business, he but yet he time. killed WCW. Get he the did, bleep out of here. He did that once. Tell me another. Actually, okay, hold on. Let me take it back. Hogan was okay with dropping the title as long as he was getting it right back. Like Luger. When Luger took the spray paint off the WCW title, I was shocked that he won that, but then they just recapture it right back but he again. he did what was best for business. Probably that in his time. pocketbook. <laughs> that time but when it came to sting the biggest match in wcw history i will never i will have alzheimer's at 80 years old if i live that long and still remember how bad they well, did that well match. let me ask you this question this is for both of you guys with you saying that sting did not come in in good shape right you said it he didn't come in jack he didn't come That's in what hogan said hogan but, and bischoff said that but you said that too well he did not look like stinger of old okay, That's okay, for sure. so be, with that being said would you have put the strap on him knowing him that he didn't come in in tippy top shape like he should have? Absolutely, because he was the yeah. hottest thing going right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he was covered up, too. He was covered up. You could just see his arms. I mean, how do you push a guy for a full year without 18 having months. matches? 18 months. A year and a half, and then you don't give him the finish that we all... Devin, best wrestler you watched all week. Yeah, I know, right? We've been talking about the dude. This is the biggest topic of the, of the wrestling world, so why not talk about it? But I, my best wrestling is probably like apples to this to this who killed WCW thing because that's the thing that people are talking about. And uh, I, this is just a, a moment for appreciation of, of Soul Rusha's, the best finisher in WWE right now. The Soul the Soul Snatcher, Soul Snatcher baby, Soul Snatcher is the best finishing move in wrestling right now. She had a double snow Soul Snatcher at the NXT pay-per-view this weekend. Yo, I don't know how she does it. It's like a inverted flip D RKO, but it's the best finisher in wrestling right now. I was gonna tell you, I hated it. I hated it, I thought it was stupid. You can hit it on everybody, but you can't hit it from anywhere. But then when she hit the one soul snatcher and then turned around to the ladder and did the second one, I go, and besides what she was wearing, the shoes, all that, I'm in. I'm 100% in. I'm a fan. Let's go! That's it. Yep. We got Dustin! Have Where's you seen her OnlyFans? Have you seen this? Hey, have you seen the Soul Snatcher, E Rock? Check it out and let me know, Devin. Oh, trust me, you already know. I'm a hey, deep dive coming coming soon. Have you seen the Soul Snatcher, E Rock? I'm I'm pulling it up right now. Look it up; it's pretty good it's stuff. The Soul Snatcher, bro. The Soul Snatcher finisher is that is the one of the greatest moves ever, bro. I love it. All right, so best wrestling that I watched all week. I've I've got to stick with Jordan Grace for a minute. I thought Jordan Grace looked like a bona fide superstar. I thought she brought something extra and something new and something special to NXT. Can't wait till she's there full time. I can't wait to see what they do next with TNA Wrestling and WWE. TNA Wrestling is playing this thing perfectly. Just fly under the radar and benefit from the big dogs giving you a little bit of love. 
Also, I had Ricochet down because I really like the stuff that Ricochet did on Monday Night Raw. Not only this week, but the last couple of weeks. I think they're doing a really good job at getting Braun Breaker over. And then I got a shout out to my boy Scotty Riggs looking awesome this weekend on Memphis Wrestling. He really did. His teeth, his hair, his body, his tan, his work in the ring. And that was like his second match back in over, what, 15, 20 years. So lots of really good uh, wrestling over the weekend. That's like an inverted. I'm sorry. I just caught it. You That's like it? an inverted like RKO. Flipping RKO thing. It's amazing, bro. Shout out to Sorusha. I, I know we got a couple, we got eight minutes left. I want to ask you this a question though. You brought up Braun Breaker. And I had in honor of the Goldberg situation we talked about for about 20 minutes today. Do you think Braun Breaker's a star? Yes. Absolutely. Eric, what do you think? Um, I'm even okay with him having Goldberg's tattoo and being very Goldberg-like for the mere fact that he is family friends with Goldberg. He's not a fan that's ripping off the stuff. He is a guy that grew up very close to Goldberg. The Steiners were close to Goldberg. Yeah. I think they all lived in the same so that's area. Scott, that's Rick's son, yeah? Rick's son, yeah. Rick's son, yes. Rick's son, yeah. yeah um, He's from Georgia, too. Yeah. Right. So is Goldberg. Um, well, basically, Goldberg. That That's actually a, a decent wrestler in the ring. I'm I'm okay with that. His his speed, I think what is he hit 25 or 27 miles an hour when he's hitting the ropes? Is that what they say? That sh looks terrifying, bro. Like if awesome. you said, hey Devin, you're getting the ring of Braun Breaker and he's gonna spear you, I'd be like, yo, okay, look. Listen, bro. here's what I could tell you. He comes from some killer genes. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he yeah. does. So All right, AEW off. Forbidden Door is coming up on Sunday, June 30th. You can watch absolutely free with us at Dave & Buster's. Also, I'll hook you up with a free power card. It's a ton of fun watching. Also, Saturday, July 6th at Lander Center in South Haven, AEW Collision returns to town. Guess who's going to hook you up with tickets? Who? Who? This guy right here. I got you guys' back, and we're going to be giving away some tickets right here on the Grind City Wrestling Podcast soon. So Forbidden Door, June 30th, July 6th, collision here in uh, the Mid-South, which is uh, Lander Center in South Haven. A couple of quick things as we have about six minutes to go. MJF, he's back. Anything different on MJF uh, than what we talked about last week? Dude, I can't stop looking at his hair now, bro. I know, right? I'm terrible for that. His hair is wild. Mm. Let's see what else. Uh, as far as the news that we have for the week, um, I mentioned how angry Bret Hart was. I thought that uh, just seeing it all over Twitter was hilarious, but also sad at the same time. Uh, or, do we want to talk about any AEW? Because we've talked a ton about WCW and we've talked a ton about WWE. I think the big I know the, the big ratings are going down the toilet. The big hitters are the who killed WCW and the whole ricochet situation. So that we're hey, have they totally botched this? Uh, uh, um, Sasha Banks. Absolutely, yes. million percent. I mean, that's is it I'm just like about. does anybody care anymore? That's what I was talking about earlier. You have the highest paid woman in AEW history or wrestling history or whatever, but she's had like one or two matches since her debut. I just feel like like if somebody like Ricochet were to go, all right, Sasha Banks went, and now she's just. She's the TBS champion, but it's not its not really special. It's not a big deal. Same thing with Edge, Christian. I just, I'm not feeling it. And I just think if Ricochet goes, we'll have some great matches, but I mean, that's about it. I think the last thing on my notes is next Saturday at AutoZone Park, Enzo will be there in the house for wrestling night with Rocky the Rockin' Redbird. What is Rocky gonna do this year, Devin? I ask you because I know Eric's a hater. Uh, so snatcher. Soul Snatcher from Rocky the Redbird? I don't Rocky know about that. I ain't no hater. You can't teach that. I get I get it. Can't I, teach that. Hey, All right, if guys. Rocky hits the Soul Snatcher, bro, he'll go viral. To be continued. Folks, the Memphis Wrestling lineup is absolutely star-studded. Check this out. Don't miss Memphis Wrestling Live. Next Saturday, June 22nd, is Wrestling Night at AutoZone Park with the Memphis Redbirds, featuring the stars of Memphis Wrestling, plus WWE star, the real one, Enzo. Next Sunday, June 23rd, TNA Wrestling Digital Media Champion, AJ Francis, returns to Memphis Wrestling, plus the real one, Enzo. Sunday, June 30th, watch AEW Forbidden Door with us at Dave & Buster's in Memphis. It's free to watch. 
Sunday, July 14th is Memphis Wrestling XL, featuring former AEW and WWE star Parker Boudreaux, plus TNA Wrestling star Marty Bell. All tickets are on sale now. Get yours right now at memphiswrestling.tv. Welcome back to Grind City Wrestling. Quick question, quick question. Is that, is that yes, pregame? Is that pregame? Is that pregame? Yeah. We've got uh, the doors will open at 535 and the first pitch is at 635. So we're going to have wrestling matches at 5 p.m. And then, of course, there's going to be shenanigans during the baseball game. And then after the game, there's a big fireworks display. And then we have the main event. I can't wait for you guys to see that. For the big main event, yeah, you do have to stay for the whole game. But I promise it's going to be awesome. E, what's going on this weekend? I will be the third man in the cage, Lander Center, uh, Shotgun uh, Entertainment, MMA Fights. That's where Who's I'll be. Who's announcer? I have no idea. <laughs> Probably Terrence Ward, to be honest with you. No, I, I think it's uh, Jamie, Jamie Grant. Oh, I think I know him from uh, the internet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know him from the internet. Devin, what's up this weekend? Uh, tapping into my wrestling will be... Uh... I don't know what I'm doing this weekend. I have something to do, but I don't know what exactly what to do. But yeah, I'll be watching wrestling everywhere I am. Uh, I actually just bought this amazing Triple H jersey. Y'all gonna love it. Uh, so yeah, I'm just buying stuff, watching stuff, being bored, ready for the season to start back. Whatever it is. Can't wait to can't wait to see the jersey. Next week is a big week for live wrestling here in Memphis, Tennessee, and this weekend on the show, ECW legends Tommy Dreamer and Kid Cash. We're on Memphis Wrestling. You can watch Friday night, Action News 5 Plus at 11 p.m. And then also Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Action News 5 Plus. Of course, you can watch live anywhere in the world, youtube.com slash Memphis Wrestling. That's all the time we have this week. I feel like we should title this one, uh, Who Killed WCW Part 2? Well, and there'll be a Part 3 next week. Yeah, Can't wait to see it. I can't wait for Part 3 because it's like, yo... Now, now we get into Vince Russo next week. Yeah, oh I think gosh. he the one. He's a, so look. The body was on the ground when Vince Russo took over, and Vince Russo is the one that like stomped it and like. Yeah, but I know we've got two minutes left. But what is Vince Russo supposed to do in that situation? We would all do the same thing. Hey, pay me a shit ton of money so I can come in and like try to revive this boat. thing. It was already dead. It was dead. <laughs> Whatever, slap nuts. <laughs> Anyway, that's all the time we have for E-Rock, Eric McMahon, for Devin Walker, baby. I am Dustin Starr. Sing. Hulk Hogan killed WCW. See you next week. Turn over. Turn to kill WCW and Hulk Hogan. I bet we could book WCW better than they did. Oh, I 100% could book WCW better. Give me that Hey, roster. listen. Kevin Nash needs to be on top all the time. He needs to have the book, right? And, yeah, like, who cares what the fans want? Who hey, cares what the fans what, want? What did he say? What did he it's say? It's 101. It's what wrestling 101. He said, have he me said, the dude, booker. I was, I was so effing over, bro. Did you hear that crowd? Did you hear him say that? Yeah. He was like, I was so effing over. No, you know, everybody was going, no, because they want, they want Goldberg to lose. They didn't care who was against. That's no work from the brother. Pray to God.